Today, we're going to talk about a sonographer's least favorite exam. Some sonographers. Dialysis fistulas. First things first, what you want to know is make sure you're actually scanning a fistula. This video is primarily going to be about fistulas. You need to know the difference between a fistula and a graft. A fistula is created with the person's, their own veins and arteries. An arteriovenous graft is implanted foreign body that they put into the body to connect an artery to an existing vein. So once you know that, then you can continue and know a little bit more about what you're going into. Some people do get that confused. And I think I did previously. It's a key difference. Next, you want to know the type of fistula. So there are brachiocephalic fistulas. There are radiocephalic. There's brachiobacillic. There's radiobacillic. You need to know exactly what type of fistula that you are scanning so you know where to look in the arm for that type of fistula. Next, you need to know the purpose of the exam. Some exams will be to evaluate for maturation of the arteriovenous fistula. So that means that this fistula was just recently created, usually six weeks prior. And at six weeks, that's when they want to do an ultrasound to see, is this fistula ready for use in dialysis? So there, there's the rule of sixes, my trainer at my current job taught me and we will go over that towards the end if it's not for maturation it could be for a lot of other things the patient might be having extensive bleeding during dialysis they might be having some hand pain so what you want to look for while you are actually scanning is evidence of a stenosis look for patent branches you might be looking for a retained valve because they usually will use a tool in the surgery to remove all of the valves in the vein when they are arterializing the vein and then look for our extremely high volume flows knowing what you're looking for that is the majority of the battle I, that, this is probably why so many people do not like performing these exams because they don't understand the purpose of it once you know the purpose of why you're doing an exam everything else falls into place it's a lot more easy so let's get into the actual protocol. So this exam, I believe, was for a brachiocephalic AV fistula. First thing you do is check the inflow. So I like to usually image the inflow. I, I like to get good pictures, elongate everything as much as I can. You can't get perfect images with these because they are sometimes turning and twisting. So I like to label the proximal anastomosis. Here you see the brachial artery and if you do not know the type of fistula that the patient has first thing you want to do is check the surgical history a lot of times you will have to actually read the op notes the operative notes to see what type of fistula was created but a lot of a lot of patients at certain facilities they show up without any of that information so what you have to do, you don't have access to that. What I do, this this whole video is what, what I do. You can do whatever you want. I'll scan the brachial artery and scan for any type of connection to a vein because the fistulas either usually come off the brachial or the radial arteries. So I'll just follow it up to know what type of vein it is connected to. So if it's on the outside of the arm, then typically the vein that is used for the fistula will be the cephalic vein. Now, if it's on the inside of the arm, typically that would be the basilic vein. Now, there are exceptions, but that will at least give you an idea, somewhere to start. Then we will take a spectral Doppler of the inflow and just make sure that your angle is parallel to the vessel walls then you will check the proximal anastomosis that can be where you see an issue as i did in this scenario now i for the i've been trying to find a normal dialysis fistula for this video but every single one i come across in my job is abnormal so, so this is what we've got i'm getting high velocities 
here and again retook measurements got high velocities so according to the iac at the proximal anastomosis or at an anastomosis if there's a tripling of velocities then that will qualify as greater than 50 percent stenosis it's triple for an anastomosis of a fistula so previously it was 229 centimeters per second and then afterwards it was almost 900 so you do the math that was more than three times the velocity so you just take the proximal anastomosis measurement and because of the 2d i had the anastomosis made with the artery so i kept my angle more or less in that same direction now as far as your colors that you're going to have in your image it's going to be crazy you do have to play with the scale and your color gain, but it's not going to look uniform. It's going to look like a lot of aliasing, no matter what, with most fistulas. So now you move on to the proximal fistula. I took some velocities here. The high velocities are continuing in this fistula, but essentially you're just progressing. You stick with the protocol. So next we're going to take a volume flow at the mid fistula how to take a volume flow that can depend on your machine but essentially you want to make sure that your angle correct is parallel to the walls of the vessel you want to widen up your sample gate to be in line with the walls of the vessel so instead of having a sample gate like this you're going to have a sample gate like this as you can see here that's my sample gate right here you also we'll have to take a diameter of the vessel walls so here's my diameter right here to right here and then select a sample of a few waveforms that could be one waveform or it can be three a lot of times and the machine will trace the waveforms and create a volume flow here it was 856. so this exam was to evaluate for maturation when it comes to volume flow for maturation the Rule of six for the volume flow is greater than 600 milliliters per minute or cc's per minute. So this fits that category of the rule of sixes. We'll go over the other two rules in a moment. So it's greater than 600 cc's per minute. Check mark for that at least. But will it check off the other boxes? We'll see. So that is how you do the volume flow. Then you'll check the velocity of the distal fistula. Here, the velocities have decreased significantly. We're down to 75 centimeters per second. And you don't typically pay attention to the velocities themselves unless there's a significant velocity change. Next, I will I check the venous confluence, notated as annotated as VC here. So, in the case of a brachiocephalic fistula that this would be where the cephalic vein connects to the subclavian vein also the axillary vein could be the outflow vein if it's a brachiobasilic for example fistula so it's usually going to be the subclavian or axillary vein that is the outflow so you want to check where the artery where that vein connects with that other vein and check the velocities here at this point the waveform should be less pulsatile it should be more venous in nature. As you can see here, it's losing a lot of its pulsatility in this waveform. Next, you want to check the actual outflow. Not everyone does this, but one of my coworkers, previous coworkers, he said that he always liked to check the outflow because the fistula can actually cause a strain on the heart if there's too much or too high velocity at this point, or it's still too arterialized, the blood flow. So here I'm missing my calipers, but I would measure the peak velocity right here. Now, when you're checking for maturation, you got to take a couple more images. So to continue the rule of sixes, the other two sixes, less than six millimeters in depth, that is depth of the fistula from the surface of the skin and greater than six millimeters in diameter of the fistula itself. So, so I usually will take this measurement at the mid fistula wherever that midpoint is of the fistula i will take a transverse image and measure the depth and the diameter so here at the mid graft 
the fistula is greater than eight millimeters from the skin surface. So that's not good. It should be a little bit closer to the surface, but it is greater than six millimeters in diameter. That's a good sign. So it just needs to be raised a little bit. And that stenosis opened up for that patient to be able to use that fistula in dialysis. So if there is a stenosis or any abnormality as there was in this case, you simply want to take additional images to demonstrate that abnormality. In this case, I took the best demonstration I could of the narrow evidence of narrowing in the proximal anastomosis. And it simply was the vessel diameter, not necessarily any atherosclerotic plaque that was causing the elevated velocities from my personal understanding. So yes, that is it. Don't overcomplicate it. You got this. And, and when you do a ton of these over and over again, it becomes a lot easier. It is different for each and every patient. So it is kind of a headache to try to scan these fistulas because you're kind of on a scavenger hunt at first. But once you figure out, oh, okay, it's this type of fistula, what I do is simply stick to the protocol. Just inflow, proximal anastomosis, proximal, mid, distal, fistula. And then if you're the type that likes to do the venous confluence and the outflow, you do that. That's it. Any abnormalities, take a few extra images to prove what you are seeing. That's all there is to it. So this was what I do. Hopefully this is helpful for you. And if you need more understanding, I don't know how to do get the right Doppler angles. I don't know how to steer my color box. The circulatory skill set is created for you. So to check that out, it will be linked in the description. And I'll see you guys in the next video.